Yeah, Illinois Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger is taking part in that task force. He's been kind enough to join Anita and I this morning via Skype. And Congressman, as I say good morning, I want to get right into this. There's a lot of debate right now about where exactly COVID-19 came from. What is not for debate is the fact that Americans, Democrats and Republicans alike, are very angry with China for not being more forthcoming uh, since the spread of this virus globally. So you're taking part in this task force. I got to ask you, how do you investigate, how do you adjudicate and keep the emotion out of it. Oh, I think it's extremely important. Here's the thing. This task, I was asked to be on this last uh, fall, actually. And uh, and then came February, we were going to announce it before really any of this was happening. And the Democrats pulled out and we were kind of waiting and we decided we're going to move ahead. We hope they join us. But I have said on every conference call I've been on with my colleagues is, guys, do not, do not make China political like we there'll be some you know back and forth like hey democrats come join us on this but we cannot turn this into a you know obamacare debate or something like that because this is the fight of our generation this is the thing that we're going to have to look back on as politicians and say what did we do or what didn't we do and shame on us if we let politics whoever side we're on you know, envelop this. Well, you know, I, I think about uh, the, the fact that, uh, you, you know, you're going to do this, and Scott was pointing, how much teeth can you actually have uh, against China? And, and suing uh, China, you know, I, I think, where's that money going to come from? And what's the result of that? Are they going to retaliate against us, you know, financially, continue to spy on us? And, 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 and I also think about the fact that the president seems to have this good relationship with uh, Xi Jinping. So I don't know, you know, where we go from here so this is what the committee is going to do and what congress is going to do there's a lot of areas we can go from here but we want to make sure we do this the right way you know supply chain getting rid of our vulnerable supply chains in china that doesn't mean everything that's made in china it's going to be impossible but what are the big like we make no penicillin in this country since 2004. That's a problem. How do we figure that out? There's also a report that we believe is coming out today that China has already, through through side groups, tried to hack our coronavirus vaccine information. I mean, we're sitting here fighting a global pandemic, supposedly with China, and they're still trying to hack our information for their profit. I mean, this is the moment where we're going to have to stand up and push back. You can sue Chinese assets in this country, but ultimately it's going to take the U.S. leading the rest of the world. This is key to fight against China. We cannot do this alone. Congressman, there are also some cultural headwinds because there are those who would argue that these wet markets are uh, where we know that the, the eating of bats is commonplace and has been so for, you know, God knows how long in China is likely the culprit here, most likely. Is there any discussion uh, uh, amongst this task force, amongst other lawmakers to talk about that publicly without this being a, a, a PC battle uh, over any claim? of xenophobia or racism, uh, because we know that coronavirus in general is present in these bats that are being eaten on a daily basis. Yeah, God bless you for saying that. And here's the thing. I was like a year ago, I was named some hero for actually opposing, you know, Chinese eating dogs. This was a this was a big thing to get rid of that. And uh, all of a sudden now we can't talk about the fact that it's bats and there's a reality, which is there, you know, any whether it was SARS, whether it's coronavirus, all of these novel viruses come from things that, you know, in many cases uh, consu are consuming wild animals. It needs to stop. Now, China's got to make that decision because we obviously can't invade them and enforce that. But there can be ways through international arms like has happened with the, you know, these dog markets and stuff through pressure. Mm. You know, I want to ask you about this contact tracing. We keep hearing governors and the president and uh, people talking about it, but there's a lot of concern that it may not even work. In fact, I was talking with a doctor from Doctors Without Borders, and she said, in theory, it works. You know, in Nigeria, she worked with the Ebola. She said it works, but this is America, and, you know, it's not going to work. People here will lie and when they're questioned about where they've been, who they've been talking to, and then they feel like it would be a violation of their constitutional rights. What do you think about this concept? contact tracing. Yeah, I think in theory it works. I think it would certainly slow down spread. Um, I think people need to get out of the conspiracies of trace of contact tracing. I'm hearing that it's going to allow the government into your home and take your children away. It's none of that. Let's stop the conspiracies that are out there. But I think the thing we have to come to grips with, 
This virus isn't going anywhere. And it's the same thing I've said to the governor. You can't stay shut down until the virus is gone. It's not going anywhere. We have to learn to live with it. And the whole key about these shutdowns is to allow the capacity of the hospital to handle it. We are there. We're going to have to live with it. It's a risk I wish we didn't have, but that's not our choice. Mm, okay. Well, it is always great to talk with you, Representative Kinzinger. Uh, continue to visit us here on Good Day Chicago. We appreciate it. Yeah, I like doing it. Thanks, guys.